Our next guest just penned an op-ed in the Financial Times highlighting emerging markets titled, quote, a tale of economic resilience, but not the one you think. Here to discuss Rockefeller International Chairman Bruce Shear Sharma, not the one that you might think, the U.S. I mean, to our point, the market's pricing out a recession, just, just as we get worried about recession every, every few months. Is, is that what you're saying, that it's, it's not the U.S.? It's emerging markets that are looking even better? Yeah, uh, because I think there's been a lot of analysis about the fact that the U.S. economy has been so resilient. The most anticipated recession in history hasn't yet arrived. But I don't feel there's been enough analysis about the fact that the real growth upside and the surprises uh, this year have come from emerging markets. The problem in emerging markets is that a lot of the negative uh, comes from the past and also because how badly China has been doing. But if you strip out China and you look at some of the other emerging markets from India to Brazil or Indonesia to Greece, these are all sort of doing really well. In dollar terms, they're all up double digits or so this year. And the resilience there, I think, is way underestimated and underappreciated than the headlines we've seen about the U.S. In the U.S., the market's performance is being inflated a lot by the mega caps, as you all have analyzed. But in emerging markets, China's bad performance, I think, is having the opposite effect. It's sort of um, not putting in spotlight the incredible resilience we're seeing across the other emerging countries. I guess my question, Rashir, is why? Because usually emerging markets are driven by a boom in China or U.S. interest rates, and both are working against them. Exactly. So that's what makes this even more impressive. And now why that's happening? Two things. One, that over time, emerging markets have been de-risking themselves from China, uh, which is as China's turned more inward, it's uh, the reliance on emerging markets to export to China or to be driven by what's happening in China has been going down. Secondly, regarding U.S. interest rates, what we have to keep in mind is that a lot of these emerging markets did not receive too much capital flows over the last decade because they've been going through this workout process of cleaning up their balance sheet. So there's not too much capital in there left to flee because in the past, the way that emerging markets will get affected by higher U.S. interest rates is it would trigger a lot of capital outflows. You don't have that this time because these emerging markets have been out of favor for a long period of time. So, the, so they're quite cheap. They're underappreciated. And many of them have been surprising on the upside. If you look at the 25 largest emerging markets in the world, three out of four of those had growth surprises on the upside in the first half of this year. That's a pretty impressive uh, stat. The whole point being that the resilience of the U.S. is well understood and sort of well telegraphed. The resilience in emerging markets here outside of China, I think, is underappreciated and not that well appreciated. Do you have to benefit, though, from picking one market in particular amongst the emerging markets? I'm just curious about the long-term correlation to the U.S. market and whether it really does provide the diversity, perhaps, that some would argue it does. I think it does, because if you look at the last decade, emerging market returns have essentially been zero in dollar terms. In fact, all international returns have been zero. So diversifying away from the U.S. over the last decade hasn't been the right strategy. The U.S. has clearly been the comeback nation or the breakout nation, whatever you want to call it. But I think that now these emerging markets are showing sign of spunk. So my own forecast is that this decade, the U.S. is likely to produce close to flat returns, and yet some of these emerging markets are likely to produce on an annualized basis, double-digit returns because they're coming off such a low base. So I think that diversification will help and going international will help. And we're seeing Japan, Europe also show much greater spunk this year. But I think that some of these emerging markets have even better growth prospects. So yeah, I think the U.S. in the near term plays a very dominant effect in driving global market sentiment. But you broaden the lens out and you begin to see that diversification is what really matters. Hey, Rashir, you know, the, the market obviously has been uh, is on watch to see what kind of stimulus China can use to reassemble influence and, and draw capital flow. Others argue that that trade is really stale this time. And I wonder if you think there's anything they can say uh, to reassert themselves globally. No, on China, like I remain a bear, which is I feel that the long term story in China is is uh, done, that their debt and demographics are just too powerful as structural headwinds. So sure, the stimulus talk can keep things alive a bit, can keep a bid on the market a bit in the short term. But I feel the long-term China story is done, uh, that the Chinese economic growth rate over the coming decade is likely to average 
about two and a half percent a year or so. Uh, and that's way below what it used to do. And that's not that much you're being paid to take uh, so much risk in China. So I think the real story in emerging markets is outside of China. And China at best can prevent, we hope, some sort of a crisis from happening there uh, through these measures that they're taking. But I don't feel that China is the place to be in any significant way over the coming decade.